Uh, well, it's a pleasure to um, talk to you this morning about GBIF. Um, there's been a lot of conversation this entire week about GBIF, uh, mostly uh, 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 side conversations, conversations related to some of the other principles and, and uh, issues that we have been presenting. Uh, but GBIF is the global player, and I say the with a capital T, is the only global player in uh, international in providing uh, free and open access to global biodiversity um, information. So uh, even though I know this is going to be on YouTube and the GBIF people will uh, probably uh, never want to see me again, I will call this GBIF the good, the bad, and the ugly. GBIF is fundamental for science and society in a global world, certainly fundamental for anything dealing with biodiversity and biodiversity data. Or uh, Just a quick review for uh, some of you who may not know a lot of the details about uh, GBIF. Uh, GBIF was established in 2001 by the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's open to all countries to be members, and, and uh, when they become members, they sign a voluntary memorandum of agreement that has now gone through at least, I think, three iterations. Um, its vision uh, is a world in which biodiversity information is freely and universally available for science, society, and a sustainable future. Uh, this is a, uh, the most current map of uh, GBIF uh, members. The ones in green are uh, ones who have signed the MOU and uh, paid up their dues at least through 2012. Uh, and these are the voting participants. They get to vote at the annual meetings of uh, the governing board, which is upcoming this October in Berlin. So they vote on all sorts of issues. Uh, dealing with the MOU, dealing with governance, dealing with budgets, and dealing with uh, committee members and elections. Um, the ones in uh, yellow, or this uh, kind of pukey green, uh, are the associated country uh, members. And these are ones that uh, do not pay dues and therefore do not vote, but they do attend um, they, they, they do attend, uh, wait, I have to correct that. They can vote, but only for uh, second and third vice chair positions for committees, not for chair and first vice chair uh, committee members. Anyways, um, among the voting participants, represented here among the students, of course, is South Africa, uh, Madagascar, Kenya, um, uh, Ghana, uh, Benin, and Congo. Do I pass the geography test for Africa? <laughs> Where's Mauritania? Uh, up there. Okay. Notice in South America, uh, Brazil has recently become an associate participant, which is wonderful. Uh, but the only voting participants are Colombia and Chile. Uh, Peru and Argentina used to be voting participants. They've dropped off. Um, Canada used to be a voting participant uh, and uh, have not paid their dues, so they are now an associate participant. India is an associate participant. But there are noticeably huge swaths of the world that are not members of GPIF. So, can I ask a question? Please. Um, what is the case with Eastern Europe? Maybe should be Eastern Europe that's lacking GPIF? Well, is there a particular reason? The question is, is there a reason why there's no membership from Eastern Europe in uh, GBIF? You know, I don't know the answer to this, except that uh, it's possible that uh, GBIF's outreach to Eastern Europe hasn't been as strong as, as it should be. 
um, and um, have not been attracted to to uh, uh, join GBIF. And much could be due to their rather difficult uh, economic situation. Um, certainly a question worth asking is uh, what's happened to China? Uh, we certainly can afford to join GBIF and has enormous biodiversity records. Uh, there used to be, there is a standing uh, rule from GBIF that if you're not a member of GBIF, GBIF will not serve your data, will not serve your data even if it's the country publishes their data to GBIF uh, databases. However, that is, uh, I have certainly advised, the Science Committee has advised GBIF to overlook that stupid rule. And if a country wants to publish their biodiversity data to GBIF, we should handle it, GBIF should handle it, whether or not the country is a member. Chris, can I just follow up on that? Selwyn, yeah. Uh, the membership of GBIF is a, a strategic approach. Uh, is it new members or is it the really opportunity to stick with the members? Uh, the question is, is, is there a strategic initiative to get new members or is it just opportunistic in attracting uh, new members? Uh, that is, a new member just comes to you and say, I want to be a member of GBIF, and we shake their hand and say thank you very much, and we welcome them. I think it's, a, it's a both. Um, for some countries, there has been a concerted effort to get them to become members of GBIF, either as associate or voting participants. Uh, Brazil is an excellent example. There's been at least three years, four years of negotiations with Brazil. There are ongoing negotiations with uh, China uh, to have them become at least an associate participant. And I know that now that India is an associate participant, there's ongoing negotiations to have them become voting participants. Um, so I, I would say it's more on the um, uh, more on the outreach, certainly to the larger countries with, with major biodiversity offerings to be made. On the other hand, sometimes they get an unexpected letter, as they did from uh, Angola um, and from Andorra that uh, they want to become members of GBIF. So here's a list of the countries uh, that are uh, uh, voting participants, associate uh, participants, and all the other associates which are NGOs. NGOs cannot nominate anybody for office, can't vote. Uh, they're just there as affiliate members. Uh, to that is recently added because they either paid or signed the MOU for uh, 2012 and part of 2013. Uh, Argentina, so that uh, Ch um, uh, Chile, Equatorial Guinea, Peru, Slovakia, there we go, we have some Eastern European countries, Slovakia, Slovenia, Uruguay, and the U.S. The funding of GBIF for which I don't have a slide, uh, is all set according to a formula based on GDP, uh, which has terrific inequities in many ways. Um, I think the GDP is a very poor measure of economic uh, state of a country, even though it's been adopted internationally. For example, the GDP of a country does not off always reflect the amount that country invests in scientific research and development, which might be a much better uh, measure of ability of countries to contribute to GBIF. And that will be discussed and be probably perhaps reformed in the upcoming meeting of the governing board. At least there will be proposals to the governing board to redo the entire schedule of payment. The GBIF budget was around four and a half million euros a year. It has since, in the last two years, it has dropped to an effective budget of about 2.8 million euros because many countries have had to cut back their payments because of financial difficulties. Uh, but uh, GBIF would like a core budget by, uh, of about 
uh, 3 million euros with supplementary funds coming in from those countries for special uh, projects who want GBIF to do special projects for them, say on invasive and alien species or pollinators or so forth. GBIF participation has steadily grown. Uh, in green, again, the voting participants is the important bar. Uh, the paying members, that has gone up to 37 from an original count of 21. Uh, the associate members have gone up and down, and as have been the other participants, uh, mostly MGOs. Here's a whole list of the GBIF participants, uh, the voting participants, the associate country participants, and the other participants, the NGOs. What does GBIF do? Well, GBIF positions itself to be between data that comes in from literature, field observations, genomics, images, uh, collections, and so forth, and solutions. Uh, government agencies, uh, and so forth. Positions itself to be in the middle uh, translating the data via biodiversity informatics into uh, solutions that can be adopted by decision makers. That's where GBIF positions itself. How does it accomplish this work? It concatenates the data from data publishers, including Africa's biodiversity institutions uh, from all over the world, publishes the data, uh, primary biodiversity data, the metadata, the names associated with the primary biodiversity data, integrates them all into and makes them available through uh, the G GBIF portal. So that The Africa's biodiversity institutions are ones of many that are sending information to the global infrastructure represented in the Secretariat in Copenhagen and available to all via the GBIF portal. GBIF can't do all this work by itself. It has many, many global partners uh, to do many of this work from metadata standards uh, to uh, persistent identifiers, taxonomic uh, standards, um, and informatic standards. So uh, one of its uh, partners is EOL, uh, the Catalog of Life for Taxonomic Authority, uh, the Biodiversity Heritage Library for uh, Literature Authority and Names and, and Citations. And if anybody can help me, I actually don't know what that stands for. Anybody know? 